everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the Atomstack A20 Pro. This is the most powerful diode laser we've looked on this channel to date. So we're gonna go through its features, see how it works, and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end of this video. So if this is something you're looking at, stay tuned. We will jump right into it. So Atomstack reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in doing a review on the A20 Pro laser. And uh, seeing as we haven't looked at a 20 watt dial laser on this channel, I thought that'd be great. So they did send it over to me and uh, this is gonna be my fair and honest review on it. As usual, I'm not gonna go through the whole build on this, but I will touch on a few of the build note features. Uh, everything came boxed well, it was uh, packaged well. Uh, I had no problems with that. Um, they do include a decent manual and uh, that has a lot of good information, uh, pretty clear instructions, a lot of photos to walk you through both the build and the software setup of this laser. So uh, I didn't have any problems following this. Uh, it's good to see them putting some effort into those manuals. The parts came bagged by step, which is great to see. I'm seeing that more and more with all the lasers. It's not just a pile of hardware, but step by step, they provide you each of the items needed. And uh, they do include the basic tools included for the build. Overall, the build went very smoothly. I didn't run into any issues. Everything lined up okay. All the parts were built with quality and easy to identify where they went. Um, biggest things I would recommend is make sure you get your belt tension right. Make sure that everything is running smoothly, that there's no slop by adjusting those eccentric nuts. And uh, take some time to make sure your cable management is in place properly and your wires are secured, that there's some strain relief on all the connections, and you'll be good to go. Let's just talk briefly about some of the general specifications of this laser. It is a 20 watt optical output and that's important to note when looking at lasers. There can be some confusion between input wattage and output wattage. So to really compare the power that you're going to have with your laser, you want to understand its output wattage. This one is 20 watt optical and that is done by coupling four 6 watt lasers into a single beam and a collimating lens. Um, this gives you roughly a 20 watt output depending on some variances. The working area of this laser is 400 millimeters square. That is your internal area where the laser can move around. Obviously the frame is slightly bigger than that, um, but is, this is typical for this style of laser to start out in that size. I do appreciate that they're using some larger extrusions. These aren't your typical off the shelf ones. They are custom made for this. And uh, they are fairly rigid and they're 20 by 40 millimeter thick. Some laser manufacturers on the lighter ones are going with just a 20 by 20 and that can add to a little bit of flexibility and rigidity in these machines is great for precision cutting. The focus point of the laser is 0 0.08 by 1, 0.1 millimeters, which is fairly typical of a 20 watt dial laser. As far as control, these are compatible with laser GRBL and Lightburn. They also do include an app that you can run from your phone. I might be taking a look at that later. I honestly primarily run this directly from my computers. And so the apps are kind of great for playing around or maybe if you're mobile just wanting to demonstrate it, but really to get the power out of these machines, you're gonna be wanting to run some software off of a Windows or Mac device. As far as what this machine can cut, um, we're looking at hardwoods, softwoods, MDFs, some acrylics, cardboard, leather, cardstock, a lot of those natural materials. Now as to how thick you can cut, it's going to vary. Now they advertise that you can cut up to around 15 millimeters in a single pass. Again, that's gonna depend on the type of wood or material you're cutting. Obviously a harder wood like oak is gonna be more dense and not gonna be able to do that, but a softer wood such as uh, poplar, aspen, uh, cedar, um, you're gonna have more success with. We're gonna take a look at that in some of our tests later. As far as metals, that's another question a lot of people ask. You can engrave on stainless steel and you can remove coatings such as powder coatings or anodizations off of other metals such as aluminum. They do claim that this can cut 0 0.05 millimeter thin steel. Um, I don't, I didn't pick up any of that. Uh, honestly, that's not what I'm looking for these machines for. Uh, it's not something I would expect this machine to do. So I'm not really gonna be testing that as I don't really see that as a practical application for this, but they do state that it can do that. Some of the other features that we have with this laser, number one, limit switches. At this level of laser, I think it's a no-brainer. It should be included. It's not required. You can still operate a laser without limit switches, but then you are going on relative to its current position versus an absolute position. So if you're looking to set up jigs and do repeatable cuts from a known location, having limit switches where the machine can home itself and really understand where that head is in its machine uh, is very 
uh, good to have and I think at this level laser is a requirement. Uh, another feature I liked is that they provide a single power supply that operates both the air pump and the laser machine itself. And so what they do is they have one power cord coming out and then there's an app adapter that wise off that can connect to the two. Now it does kind of limit the distance you can have your, your air pump from your laser. So that's a little limiting, but overall I prefer the reduced clutter of not having extra power adapters, extra plugins to uh, run the device. So in my mind, that's a bonus. Secondly, they use a typical PC cable to the power supply. This isn't the power brake that plugs right into the wall or into your power strip. This makes it a lot more flexible where your power supply goes and it doesn't take up a lot of extra space on your power strip or your outlet. So props to both those features on the power. Another feature that I like is its adjustment knob for the focus. Now this is a fixed fo focus laser, so to adjust your focus, you will loosen the knob and adjust the height relative to the material. Now they do provide a really nice tool that it's not, you're not gonna misplace this, and it has it set up to whether you have this shroud on, uh, you can just place this underneath, set it right on the material, lower it down, and that'll focus it on top. Or if you have the shroud off, you tip this up on end, lower it down to the base of the laser module, and there again, you have your focus set. This laser includes an air assist nozzle. Now you can remove it to help to clean if needed, so it just bolts onto the bottom of the laser module. The air tube is routed down through the laser module, keeping it out of the way, just helping with some of that cable management, keeping the laser clean. In this version, they do have this larger module that is the air pump. Now, this is supposed to be a twin cylinder compression so that it should be providing more smooth and consistent airflow. The importance of that is having a steady stream of air versus pulsing air that you might get from some aquarium pumps can actually affect the quality of your cut. Whether it's an engraving, you might see some variations, or in your cutting where it can uh, have more of a pulsating effect. It's variable from about 15 to 30 liters per minute. Uh, typically, you're going to get about 25 liters per minute airflow out of it consistently. Another feature of this laser is they do provide this LCD panel for offline operation. Uh, you can load your files onto the compact flash card, go into the menu options and select your parameters, set your home point, and engrave from there. So if you have a number of machines that you have con uh, repeatable files on, as it would be an option for you. Again, I don't use it a whole lot. I generally run directly from my computer through Lightburn. Uh, so we will touch on that. But uh, it's a nice feature that's available, but one of those things that I don't feel is needed. It's just nice to have. One of the features included with the kit they sent me is the R3 rotary. This is your typical roller rotary. So your device sits on here and the roller is just rotated around. I do like that they are adjustable and they are raised, which means you could do a longer piece than some of them that are just set down into the metal and uh, might have an end stop here. With that roller, they also do include these risers. They simply bolt onto the, or clamp onto the feet. They have skid pads on the bottom to keep it from moving around. And this raises it up about four inches off your material. The big question is, of course, how does the laser perform? All the specs mean nothing if we can't get some real world tests. So that's exactly what I did. And I was excited to test out first the cutting capability. So within Lightburn, you can set up a material test. And this is a graduated scale of both speed and power. These are in millimeters per minute. So as you can see, it had, uh, cut out at 100% power up at 530 millimeters per minute, all the way down to about 52% power at 250 millimeters per minute. So that was a pretty broad range of its cutting capability. And again, this is with the air assist on and you can see where it actually did cut out items. There's no real charring or overburn outside of there. So both those things were doing their job really well. In, in comparison uh, with my 10 watt lasers, I generally expect to be cutting between 200 and 300 millimeters per minute on this three millimeter Baltic birch. Now, of course, I wanted to move into thicker materials, so I took some of this quarter inch material from a uh, big box store. And uh, first I started out just going 200 and 350. Again, not sure where it was gonna end up, and it blew out almost the entire scale on that one. So I bumped up my speed. I went from 300 to 600 millimeters per minute. Uh, it did top out there at 100% power at uh, 500 millimeters per minute. It was still cutting through, so I can safely say probably about 400 to 450 millimeters per minute. For this material, running 90 to 100% power, I can cut it out all day without any problems. One thing they advertise with this laser is that it can cut out thicker materials in a single pass. They're saying about 
10 to 15 millimeter material. So I grabbed a variety of few and uh, thought I'd test it first off with some of the thicker, denser plywood. I knew it would probably be a trick, but I wanted to see if it could get through it. So this is about 11.3 millimeters, close to that 12 meters, so right in the middle of that range. And you see here, it did cut through. However, I did have to adjust the focus down just a little bit, and this took about four passes. So can it do it? Yes. Uh, does it cut it cleanly? Fairly well. If you can see there, uh, there's some charring, but it's still fairly smooth except for that bottom corner right there. Possible, but I don't know that it's practical. Now we jump over to the other end of the spectrum, and I took some clear aspen. Uh, so this is a softer wood. There's not as much grain. There's definitely no layers and no glue. And I started doing some tests. And as a matter of fact, I was able to jump from 100 millimeters a minute on up to 150 to where it almost cut through on that 150, but not quite. But at 100 and 125, single pass, 100, um, I think this was 90% power to 100% power, and it was a very clean cut. So um, pretty decent cutting capability for some thicker material. This, this, this isn't something I'd expect out of my 10 watt lasers. Um, and not terrible speeds. I wouldn't necessarily want to cut out something really huge with this because it will take a lot of time and uh, you are going to be prone to more areas that might have some issues. But if you're doing some smaller items and, and can focus it on smaller pieces of wood but still have some thickness, definitely something that this laser could do. So of course we tried it on a few different materials um, with differing success. I did get through some uh, oak here again. This is about 10 millimeter thick oak. Again, that took about three to four passes. And then some maple here. This is about quarter inch maple. And I believe this took one to two passes at 100% power. Going to the other extreme, I took some three quarter inch pine and uh, did work my way through with the cut. This took a number of passes to get through. It was, uh, I think, four passes uh, at full power and really bumping that laser down to try to work that focus point in. Again, not practical but it is technically possible. So with those parameters, I was able to work on a couple of projects and I wanted to see both the accuracy and detail of cuts. So I went and picked up a file for this Wireframe F4U Corsair. And as you can see there in some of these details, it's got some very fine cuts in there, very small circles, very small squares. And this whole item itself is actually only about seven inches wide and those small details there are smaller than an eighth inch uh, actually about a sixteenth inch in those uh, rectangles so some very decent accuracy there and then did this scaled it up of course using that quarter inch plywood was able to make one of these a little bit bigger and then there's actually a separate video where I put, made this into three pieces made it over 36 inches in length glued them together so this laser uh, performed very well on this quarter inch material, making something much larger than its bed itself. I'll have a link to that video as well if you'd like to check out that project. While the cutting ability impressed me, I was wanting to see, did it give up any ability in engraving? And so we ran some tests and starting here just with some simple basswood plywood, uh, we took this artistic rendering of a stormtrooper and engraved it on here. So as you can see, you can still bring out a fair amount of detail in there in addition to that, we took this small business card size piece of plywood and went ahead and engraved this line drawing on here along with some text. Now the text, this fine text, that's getting a little bit fuzzy, but we're talking about maybe a millimeter in height. And at that point, um, on a natural material such as this that's got fibers, it's going to struggle to maintain the detail, but um, for those line drawings, as very fine detail, so I'm very impressed. In addition to the wood, we tried engraving on a few other materials. So here is an example of engraving on slate. Just to be a little creative, I took the image of a 486 DX2 CPU, recreated it to engrave it on this gray tile, so it has the effect of looking like an old school computer processor. Of course, these are all natural materials. Uh, other ones that we can engrave on are, of course, glass. And so this was highlighting both the ability to engrave on glass as well as using the rotary. And so this is just a vector image, state of Minnesota with the text in there. And uh, we accomplished this by utilizing tempera paint, some black tempera paint, used an airbrush, sprayed that on, let it dry, and made sure that it was very even coats, uh, but fully covered, and then put it in the rotary and engraved. You could do a similar thing with some spray on paints 
or you could also use laser marking spray and brilliant spray. That is typically done on stainless steel. And so speaking of metal, we can mark on metal. And so we use that same spray here to add this really dark, uh, actually it got a little bit hot. <clears throat> I could have backed the settings off on uh, power or increased the speed. But uh, we are able to engrave stainless steel. And again, using those rotaries, these are some nice straight objects. It worked great. I didn't have any walking of these on the rollers. I didn't have any issues with any uh, skewing of the image. So um, great application for using that rotary. Let's talk about some of my final thoughts on this. So as, the, as of the time of this recording, this laser runs roughly $1,000. Now this kit also included the rotary and that can bump up the price of the kit as well. But in comparison, there are not a whole lot of other 20 watt diode lasers out there. A couple other manufacturers, the price points I was finding was between $900 and about $1,100. That wasn't including a rotary. That may or may not have included the air assist. So I feel their price is right in line with your 20 watt diode lasers out there right now. It is a bit more of a premium than you're going to pay for some of the 10 watt or the 5 watts out there, but you are gaining a lot of capability in the cutting arena especially. I hope you found this video informative. If you have questions about this laser or anything I did in this video, please leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. I'll also have links to this and other products that are available that uh, some may be affiliate links and they do give me a little bit of a kickback, but please, no pressure. Uh, I just use those funds to help continue content on this channel. I'll be doing more videos like this and others in the future. So if I've earned your trust and respect, hit that like button, consider subscribing. That way you will not miss my future videos and uh, we will have more coming at you soon. In the meantime, I hope you get out in your workshop and make something.